good evening everyone i can already see a few people uh, you know dropping messages to say uh, wish us good evening and good evening to all of you to all the attendees who decided to be a part of this webinar uh, we officially kick start the webinar for today but before we do that happy world photography day to all of you out there and i'm pretty sure to the ones who have joined this webinars you all are enthusiastic you all are aspiring photographers or are already acclaimed photographer in your own right and in your own way so happy world photography day it's the day to celebrate people like you it's the day to celebrate all of the attendees like you so we are all here together for the day 2 of this photography festival that nshm has come about and uh, i think before we start off this webinar and before we have our esteemed guest and our moderator to start off today's session we need to take a few minutes to understand what world photography day truly signifies and what is the history behind it well world photography day originates from the invention of the daguerreotype a photographic process which was developed by frenchman louis daguerre and joseph nips in 1837 on january 9th 1839 the french academy of science announced the daguerreotype process and on august 19th the french government purchased the patent and announced the invention as a gift which was free to the world without any copyright since then world photography day has been celebrated so that people around the world can communicate their feelings and express themselves through the art of photography the whole idea behind the day is to hold discussions like this one about photography and encourage everyone like you people who want to pursue photography as a hobby or as a career at the same time on this day the pioneers who inspired others to take up this skill are remembered for their contribution and on that note i would like to bring to your notice that this whole three day event has been dedicated to the photographers of the legendary photographers of west bengal we would like to dedicate this entire event to people like shukumar rai satyajit rai benu sen sunil jana shubhrata mitro nimai ghosh tarapada banerji vivek das shushanta banerji and sunil dath we start with shukumar rai shukumar rai was a bengali writer and poet from the indian subcontinent he is remembered mainly for his writings for the children son of children story writer upendra kishor rai and father of indian filmmaker satyajit rai he was trained in photography and printing technology in england at the school of photo engraving and lithography london and has been a pioneer for photography and lithography in india next we have none other than satyajit rai Satyajit Rai a man who needs no introduction an indian oscar winning film director writer and illustrator one of the greatest filmmakers of the 20th century he started his career as a commercial artist and was drawn into independent filmmaking his passion towards still photography made him the maestro of movie making next we have Benusen Benusen was the secretary general of the Federation of Indian Photography FIP and president of the Photographic Association of Damdam PAD contributed many photographic works both in the field of social and cultural anthropology and museum related pictures and photographs his passion was to guide the upcoming photographers in the profession and during his life span he made a pretty number of students dazzled in the arena of photography his works prove exactly why next we have sunil jana a well known indian photojournalist and documentary photographer who worked in india in the 1940s sunil jana is internationally acclaimed for documenting india's independence movement its peasant and labor movements for mines and riots rural and tribal life as well as the years of rapid urbanization and industrialization noted for the beauty and technical quality of his compositions sunil jana's photographs are significant 
in their historical content as well as the emotional connect. Next, we have Shubroto Mitro, a renowned still photographer turned cinematographer. At the age of just 21, Mitro, who had never before operated a motion picture camera, began his career as a cinematographer with Satyajit Rai. He was acclaimed for his work in the Opu trilogy. Mitra is often considered one of the greatest of Indian cinematographers. Next, we have Nimai Ghosh, a noted Indian photographer, most well known for working with Satyajit Rai as a steel photographer for over two decades, starting with Gupi Gain, Bhagabain till Ray's last film, Agantuk. He was a jury member of the 2007 National Film Awards and was awarded the Padma Shri by Government of India in 2010. Here is a picture, the BTS of today's generation from the Shonar Kela shooting. Next, we have Tarapada Banerjee, one of the most famous and highly respected press photographers of India associated with ABP group for a long period of his professional life. He was extremely famous for his candid shots and has done wonderful documentary photography on Bangladesh war and Satyajit Rai. Calcutta, Calcutta, you beauty. Next, we have Vivek Das. One of the finest industrial and advertising photographers of India, his craft makes lifeless products vivacious. He has shot for many well-known Indian and international clients and has received many prestigious awards. How can we talk about the power of mass communication, advertising and public relation without a good photograph? Next up, we have Shushanta Banerjee. He was a famous sound engineer in HMV, the gramophone company. He had the opportunity to work with many famous singers, music directors, and filmmakers of our country. But he was also a very well-known photo artist, not just in India, but throughout the world. He has to his credit more than 400 acceptances in different international salons and exhibitions spread across various countries in various continents. He has backed many medals and awards and a number of reproductions in salon catalogs. He is also having many international fellowship in photography. Lastly, we have Sunil Dutt, a renowned Indian photographer and photojournalist. He is known as the photo chronicler of Mother Teresa's life and work for more than 30 years till her death in 1997 also known as the chronicler of Calcutta and its many mood for his vignettes of life in Kolkata, India. His photographs have been published in many newspapers, magazines, journals, and has received many national and international awards. Sunil Dutt has been in the field of photography and photojournalism for more than 50 years. On this World Photography Day, we wish you all a happy World Photography Day and we would like to take a minute to thank these legends for their unparalleled contribution to this field and for inspiring all of us to pick up our cameras and chase our dreams. Now to kick start with today's session, I think I would like to take a few moments to bring on screen officially our guest speaker for today. We have with us Mr. Shomo Shankar Ghoshal. Shomo Shankar Ghoshal is a Kolkata-based street and documentary photographer. With over a decade's experience, his work has won numerous accolades in India and internationally, including consultative group to assist the poor World Bank, Namani Government of India, Ministry of Inform and Cultural Affairs, Government of West Bengal, and ICICI Bank Life, Live Your Passion Grand Challenge. His work has been published in noted publications, including National Geographic, Traveler India, Lonely Planet, CNN Travel, India Today, just to name quite a few. He's an official Canon EOS Maestro, 
invited by Facebook as the curators of India's first official Instagram exhibition. He was a keynote speaker in the United General Kolkata Eco Cinema 2019 International Film Festival and Ministry of Tourism Dekho Apna Desh. He has worked with several NGOs, including Escon and Cry. An independent voting system by street hunters had placed him at number three in the 20 most influential street photographers of 2017 globally. He is a recipient of the prestigious Sarkopedia Frams Grant 2019 and has worked extensively on Kolkata's hand pulled rickshaws. He's an MBA with finance major and professionally, he's an independent management consultant as well. We would like to take this opportunity to welcome him for our webinar. We also have with us Samid Rai Chaudhary, who will be our moderator for today's session. So we would also like to welcome him on screen. If you could please switch on your video cam, Samid. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. you are. Hello, sir. Hello, Samid. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, so before we start off the session, I'll take a few moments to bring to the notice. Uh, since a lot of you had, had the queries yesterday about our feedback link, we are going to make the feedback link visible today and it will be available to you via the chat option. So please feel free to give us your valuable feedback and uh, extremely sorry that we couldn't entertain that query yesterday because we're not prepared for it. But we did uh, make it come to a notice and we have worked on it and we'll make the link visible and available on the chat option shortly. Uh, do remember to click on the link and give us the feedback. Also, for all the queries that you might be having, remember to use the Q&A option. We'll be taking up your queries towards the end of the session. And uh, also, uh, I would also like to bring to the notice that uh, if you have any kind of comments, any kind of feedback or any kind of conversations that you would like to have or indulge with us, uh, do so by the chat option or the Q&A option. But please try and avoid any kind of toxicity when it comes to communicating with any of the panelists, the speakers or the fellow attendees as well. On that note, welcome all of you. And I would like to hand over to our moderator for today and our guest speaker to start off with today's session. All over to you, sir. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you so much. Thank and, you, Anisha. Uh, and I, I'll tell you, I feel really privileged to be sitting in this room. And on the left of me, uh, outside the room, is our drawing room. Uh, one of the legends that you had mentioned in your list today, Mr. Benu Sen, uh, we, we used to call him like uh, Benu J2. So, uh, they not only Benu J2, Benu J2's uh, brother, who is uh, again, we call him Joga J2, who is Bishoto uh, Shengupto. Uh, they used to be coming to our place uh, on a regular basis, probably every weekend, to have a chat with my grandfather. And you had mentioned a photographic association of Dumdum for which uh, Benu J2 was the yes. president. Yes. So, uh, my grandfather was a president also of that uh, esteemed organization. Oh. And after my grandfather had left, I uh, left in the sense, I mean, when he was no more, uh, Benu Jethu took over that uh, presidency. Oh, so I think we should also take a minute to, you know, remember your grandfather as well, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Of I, course. Think, the I think first thing his in the contribution. Morning, <laughs> the first thing in the morning that I did after you woke up, I said, uh, happy birthday, Dadubai. Uh, uh, happy World Photography Day, Dadubai. Uh, birthday yes. also, is, his birthday is also very, very special to me. Surely, surely. And I think uh, we would also like to, you know, remember him today. Because I think it is for people like him that we get to celebrate days like this. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. contribution is unparalleled and irreplaceable of, you know, people like that. Of, you know, photographers right. like that. So, yes, sir. And I'm in privilege to know at least one of these legends in person, like not as a big, of course, he's a, it's a, he's a world-renowned photographer, but for us, he was Benu J2. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, start it, sir. Yes, yeah, Shandeep. Yeah, I'll start off with a very basic question. So the first question for you is, uh, when did you start photography? Like at what age? Uh, Shonin, I'll be very honest with you. Like I, I, I had a love for photography 
probably i'm talking about a reference just what we talked about like i know about an organization called pad that is photographic association of dumdum uh, probably since my birth because pad was a very part and parcel of this particular house and mm. every and, and people who are attached to photography they will know uh, i do not know what happened this year but pad has got a ritual of having their annual photography exhibition from shoshti to nabomi every year irrespective of the month or the dates it has always happened from shoshti to nabomi at damdam and what i still remember is my grandfather used to take me as a kid i used to go there I, of course i did not really understand what was happening out over there but i do remember that there used to be a lot of photos at damdam motijil college still that is the venue for that exhibition i do not know whether that got me attracted to photography or not but what i really probably can find when i have grown up is uh, my grandfather used to keep his cameras of course for, for us cameras are very very precious so like he used to keep it very safely uh, my father still keeps his cameras very safely and as a kid i was not allowed to touch them now i know now i know the significance why i was not allowed to touch them yeah. so probably that curiosity thing like i was allowed to touch everything in the home but not the cameras not the cameras so, yeah. so i used to think like what is this thing so magical what is this so mysterious all about and the mezzanine floor in our house uh, of course now it is basically the puja room the thakur god that we call in bangla but still today we refer it to at the as the photography room it was basically the dark room so in all <laughs> our relative all our relatives and even the people of the surroundings they still know it as the photography room so that is how probably i started having an interest about photography but if you really ask me taking up a camera uh, the first camera i got uh, was around class 7 and that too was because it was a gift of oite so that's the open hand ceremony that you yeah. but unfortunately uh, even at that point of time uh, a film developing a film used to cost about 80 rupees so a student of class 7 uh, and i'm talking about 1993 so it's long back so 80 rupees pocket money and of course of course we did not have a concept of a pocket money whatever is there used to be the expenses our parents used to do but nowadays children get pocket money we didn't yeah. get it so uh, really i took up a camera uh, around 2002 in between also have done but of course not on a regular basis 2002 of course i did not have my own camera uh, it was the family camera and it was of course a digital camera so i was allowed to you of course i had been grown up at that point of time to handle the camera so i was allowed to use a camera and If you ask me, when did I have my own camera? I think it was in 2007. Uh, yeah, 2007. I had my own personal camera. Okay. okay. So the next thing uh, is, uh, sir, uh, there are so many genres in photography, right? Right. Uh, but you chose street photography. So what is the exact thing about street photography which attracted you towards it? Okay, show me. Uh, I'll tell you how it happened. Mm -hmm. for the first for the, uh, i have been using that uh, home camera for let's say from 2002 uh, mm -hmm. till let's say 2005 I, i mean not even 5 i think more than 2006 so these four years i had tried to choose a, my own genre that is i used to love nature i mean anybody who buys a new camera he will see like he yeah. goes out clicking i mean anybody does it i mean he would go out and take pictures of sun Moon. everything everything that sir i mean anything under the sun whatever he has he will do it i had done it for almost 4 to 5 years i of course even even uh, today also i love uh, seeing a lot of nature and wildlife photographs but just as a viewer not as a practitioner so i tried to uh, have an interest for the various genres but unfortunately the genres did not accept to me so and it is very surprising i find it personally very surprising for the first 4 5 years that i had been working on mm -hmm. the only thing that i used to hate photographing 
were people. For example, I still remember like uh, at that point of time, if you remember like, of course, you are much younger to me, but people around my age will remember we used to have something called picnics. Every winter we used to have picnics. So picnics were basically family gatherings, those kind of things. I mean, at a, some place. So I still remember with one that digital camera, uh, the entire day was spent in taking photographs of butterflies. And when I came back home, even the, let's say the, the photograph was exposed well, but if I could see a human being, someone walking uh, behind, that is the first thing I used to delete that photo. What, I somehow, I do not know, of course I love human beings, but at that point of time, I absolutely hated uh, <laughs> having human beings in my photographs. So uh, like, of course, digital camera was something new at that point of time. And whenever we had gone to some vacation, uh, in a typical Bengali scenario, you would see uh, out of 100 photos, uh, around 70 photos would be basically selfies and family photos at the place of vacation. And maybe 30 photos is just about the place. But in my case, it used to be 99% of the photos used to be of the place. And one photo in the whole album used to be with the family. So my mother used to tell me like, why don't you click us? I said, one photo is more than enough in the whole vacation. So <laughs> somehow, somehow, uh, probably I did not choose uh, street photography. Of course, I've it never had you. a love. Probably street photography was kind yes. enough to choose me. <laughs> yes. It was kind enough. So, and uh, like I've been continuing with street photography from 2006, seven onwards and today is 2020. So okay. quite a few years. So another thing, sir, uh, you have met the inspirations of many. You have met people like Rabu Rai, Steve Macri. So what was the feeling when you got to meet living legends like them? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, the first uh, one or two minutes or so uh, was pretty difficult because uh, when you talk about a gentleman called Steve Macri, uh, our school used to have a very well-stocked library and... Uh, I never, as a kid, I never uh, really liked those naughty and Tintin books, of course, browsing through them or, or those um, asterisks. I just used to just browse through them. I never had a like inclination to even read what was in them. Uh, mm -hmm. I still remember, now I know it's a National Geographic magazine, but at that point of time, I really never knew. I used to see a publication with yellow borders having a lot of photos of animals. So that used to, that particular magazine, which is basically National Geographic magazine, that used to attract me as a kid. Of course, I did not understand much, but I just used to browse just to see a lot of those photos and all. And during class seven, uh, this was 93 or so, that is much, much later than the, the Steve Macri's, the most famous Afghan girl photo that was taken. I saw yeah, this yeah. photo and I never knew who the photographer was, but that particular photo stuck with me ever since. I mean, it was just, I mean, it's not me. I mean, probably anyone who has seen that photo ha is like mesmerized. Of course, I never knew about this, who the photographer was or what was the context about the photo. Now I'm talking about uh, a period, let's say 2005 onwards. When I, uh, not 2005, I'll say around 2002, I knew about, then I came to know this, the gentleman who photographed this is Steve McCurry. And 2005, it was a rainy day. I was at my office. Uh, internet at that point of time was not as easily available as it is today in our pockets. So uh, I was in a marketing profile. So that particular day, I did not go out. So what I used to do is like I was browsing and then I came to know this gentleman has not only photographed, I mean, around the world, he has a huge body of work in India and Kolkata. Yeah. For Kolkata also has got a huge amount of work. So yeah. you can understand a boy of class seven who had that picture like almost pierced in his mind and then slowly comes to know about this man. So when I meet this person after almost 27, 28 years, mm -hmm. uh, the first one or two, maybe the first minute at least, uh, uh, I was spellbound. I mean, there was not much to say, not much to talk. And 
and when he is in front of you uh, like you are a drop in front of an ocean what do you speak Time about stuff so what do you speak about <laughs> photography with him so uh, the only thing that i could talk with him was regarding kolkata and of course okay. his uh, inspirational photos that have uh, i would say it has i want to use the word influenced me but given me an impetus uh, to work about kolkata because uh, the thing is that we know about his works but only thing that i really want to share with you because uh, i have been very lucky to have met him in person he is such a humble person he will not make you feel that you are standing in front of steve mackerel you will feel within a minute you will feel that he is a person you know you know very well so that is the quality even with guruji or padmashri raghurai if you meet him uh, he would he, he will not re, he will not make you realize that he is padmashri yes, raghurai yes. he is very down you, to earth he is absolutely down to earth he is absolutely yes, down to earth and uh, when he speaks he will say uh, he will not address you by your name he will say beta so that is how so so it's not about just about the photography aspect of this wonderful wonderful thing. i'm also very lucky to have met another wonderful photographer who uh, his his name is pablo bartholomew even pablo bartholomew had assisted shotoji tre uh, around 19 uh, 1978 79 that period when he was in kolkata and he has got a beautiful documentation on the chinese community of kolkata at tangra so even when i have been very lucky to have interacted with him when he was in kolkata and he is also very very down to earth i mean that is probably one quality of these people that uh, they don't make you feel low in front see we are nothing yes, yes. in front of them we are absolutely nothing exactly but, but when they talk to you they will feel make you feel very very comfortable okay So, sir, now let's uh, come to the main part of the webinar where we'll yeah. be talking about uh, storytelling through photography. So, right. the first thing which I would like to ask is, sir, what is the exact meaning of visual storytelling? Ah, uh, do you mind if I share a? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be great if you can yes, explain it. Yes, and uh, I would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, I'll yes, just... and I would like to request uh, all of you to please, uh, you know, switch off the video camera yeah, for the time sure. being. Yes. Okay. uh shonid i believe the screen is available like the screen share is okay yeah yeah it's perfect sense perfect okay okay uh, visual storytelling is i mean i'm i'll be telling you in my perspective what i understand as a uh, visual storyteller uh, but let me confess i am not uh, i'm a self taught photographer i have not been lucky enough to have gone to some institute to learn photography so uh, whatever mm -hmm. i say it is uh, based on my experience uh, but it might be uh, possible that whatever i would be saying it's it may or not be 100% right but because it is my perspective of analyzing what is street photography or visual storytelling uh, in terms of my experience so yeah. see for me before i go into visual storytelling i mean let me come to storytelling first i mean uh, when we were kids uh, do you remember very well like our grandfathers or uh, our grandmothers like uh, or even especially the mothers uh, when mm -hmm. we, during our bed time they used to tell us stories yes, and yes. although there is a generation difference with the i mean uh, with the grandparents but one thing that probably connected each of us was stories so stories are nothing but probably as per my understanding is a mode of sharing thoughts and communications so storytelling connects us all now storytelling is not just about uh, a grandmother or a grandfather or a mother or a father telling some kind of fairy tale to uh, us or a child mm -hmm. it is also about sharing of information the the yes. visual that you are seeing on the left and the visual that you are seeing on the right they are not the same one has to do with kids 
the other has to do with a corporate house this yeah. is a visual wherein we can see a, about four people they are in a corporate meeting now of course in a corporate meeting they do not uh, tell fancy stories or uh, anything that i mean it's nothing child like but it is a mode of communication i would consider is some form of storytelling the next slide would clear uh, my uh, thing a little better mm -hmm. storytelling uh, has come much much later storytelling much later before human beings could even speak before mm -hmm. the language was ever developed people had an inclination of expressing themselves with paintings photography today is nothing more than an extension of painting so this is a photograph where even you can see it's a cave painting yes it is a kind of visual storytelling even before people could even talk now visual storytelling was not only prevalent maybe thousands and thousands of years back it is prevalent even today just take it back i mean the the slide that we saw earlier we are talking about a corporate uh, discussion or a meeting or a board meeting that is going on still today it is a form of visual representation with either charts or graphs or something i mean instead of saying numbers if that is represented or let's say, let's let me assume this this is a sales figure for the last four quarters so instead of saying 4 million dollars 5 million dollars 1 and a half million and 6 million yeah. it is visually represented as human beings these visual representations helps us to understand things a little more so visual storytelling is not just about cave paintings or something that you see in the board rooms it is relevant all around us all around us let me take a few examples early morning the newspaper arrives at your place yes it is a it is a newspaper please note it is a newspaper yes. so something yes. is written but shunit whether okay. it is uh, uh, it is a pandemic or dhoni taking a retirement or the 15th august celebration what or some kind of sports whatever the mm -hmm. very first thing that we see in a newspaper is the photograph yes definitely after see the flow of information although it is a newspaper it is not a picture paper but yes. with a newspaper we see the photograph then we see what is the headline all about then if we are interested finally we go into the news yes so photos play a huge amount of it. this is not just about newspaper you take up any magazine you take up a let's say somebody who is studying in let's say nursery or kg their books would be having a lot of photos about those a for apple b for ball c for cat those yes, kind of yes, see it is not it is it's not just a for apple the apple is basically drawn it, it gives, explains the entire thing at once absolutely so it gives a visual clue to the little child what is that a for apple so that yes. sticks into his mind let's come up to something the billboards when you are crossing mm -hmm. let's say you see a lot of billboards all around the city but you mm -hmm. see a lot more billboards when you are crossing em bypass or the vip yes. road there are a lot of billboards so yes. when you are see when you are passing on your car uh, you get a fraction of a second or a little to read whatever is there primarily yes. you will see it is has to do with the visual part of it forget about a billboard at uh, let's say uh, em bypass think about your nearest sweet shop near mm -hmm. your para mm -hmm. you will see the i mean the sign board it will not have a typical uh, let's say a photo of a rasgulla or a pantua but mm -hmm. you will see you will still see the name of the uh, the, the shop would be in a written in a very fancy kind of a font it would be eye catching yeah, yeah. it would yes, be it is highlighted differently every time it is also highlighted so the basic purpose is always may not be photos but at least attraction let me let me let me ask you uh, okay okay how many times you don't have to say me the correct answer 
But let's say how many times do we generally log on to Facebook every day or Instagram? Uncountable. 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 Now let us take a situation. Uh, mm -hmm. Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. disables all the photos. How many times will you log in? Maybe maybe once a day just to see what are the updates. That's it. How yeah. many times do you really log on to Twitter? You don't much because it has to do a lot of. Uh, even on Twitter also there is a lot of influence of photos. So mm -hmm. photos not only play on the daily lives but also uh, let's say uh, I'll just give you a reference. Uh, when internet was came into India, it mm -hmm. was not this much evolved. And uh, we still remember as students, we used to use internet. Uh, it was absolutely text based. It was all about information, nothing to do with photos. So, so it was not attractive at that point of time compared to what it is today. Mm -hmm. I have taken an example of an X noodle, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. When you have your favorite noodles, you know what is inside the packet. You know it very well. But yes. still you will see a photograph of that noodle is given inside. So it helps you to have a pre-visualization of it. Yeah, how it will look after it's cooked. Yeah. Absolutely. For example, you have gone and purchased a, can a canon lens. You know yeah. what is inside the box, but it gives a visual representation. Yeah. Okay. So visual thing cues plays a huge importance of role in our lives. And now what I will do, I'll quickly go through uh, five photos of, uh, I won't say uh, the, the most five favorite photographers. Of course, they are my favorites. Uh, there are a lot more favorite photographers. But before I share their photos, uh, I have put a disclaimer on the screen uh, because I have not taken a permission from for using the photographs in the presentation today, uh, whether it is the Copyright Act of 1976 USA or the Copyright Act of 1957 India, it allows, because today's session is an educational session, it allows copyrighted photographs to be used for educational training without infringing any kind of rights. So without further ado, uh, let us move on. And before we move on to the pictures, all photographers, the, the works have been on the left, they have been attributed and all the image referenced here are for illustration under fair use policy. All copyright rests with the either the respective artists, photographers, agencies, or if the photographer is no more with us, it rests with the estates, their own estates. So the first photograph that I would like to highlight upon is uh, Henry Cartier Brissot's uh, one of the most famous photos, like storytelling, the power of storytelling, I would say. Uh, if you could just see the mouse movement that I'm doing right over here, I, I hope you, everybody can see that. It was taken at a certain point of time, uh, just before the man had jumped from this wooden plank. Had it been taken a fraction of a second earlier, the man would have still been on the plank. Had it been taken a fraction of a second later, he would have jumped on the water and it would have created ripples. And, and of course, you did not get that uh, beautiful moment, right? Yeah. But, Very good the, time. But, but the power of visual storytelling yeah. is not just with this. I will show you something. It is very, very interesting thing. That is why this photograph is so, so powerful. You see the place where I'm just moving my mouse. Can you see a circus advertisement wherein, can you see there is a ballerina uh, doing yes, a yes, dance? Yes, uh, yes, I, yes. I would just request the participants who have logged in from their laptops or desktop, it's fine. But if you have logged in with your mobile, if you could just put the auto rotate on in the landscape mode, that would help you to see this. Of course, this photo would be on the portrait mode, I think on better, but still for the landscape mode, it would help you to see the photos a little better. So, so can you Shonji, see this thing? Like it is such a powerful photo. He saw this and he saw this man coming and he pre-visualized that this man might jump. The man might have walked also. So that is what creates geniuses. Mm -hmm. Let me move on to the second photo. 
this was no. by uh, of course uh, i did not take his photo from the internet because i had this photo in my archive and it's a very precious photo for me uh, at kolkata so uh, this is steve mackery's photo at poor bandar in gujarat uh, steve mackery when he was a kid about 11 years old he was very very inspired by seeing a uh, doc not a doc it's a photo documentary on indian monsoons that was basically published in life magazine so this 11 year old steve mackery always wanted to do something when he grew up and this was a time it this is around 1983 or 84 he came to india to document monsoons and the power of storytelling goes like uh, when this photo this photo was taken when steve mackery was also in the same neck dip kind of a water uh, mm. the power of this image is this old tailor who uh, this is his own livelihood he yeah. is taking this swing machine it's a german pop swing machine this photo was taken and later it was like if i'm not very wrong this was actually published as the cover photo of national geographic now this german company when they saw this particular photo see the emotional connect of the photo uh, people would be running away for their lives he is basically carrying a old worn out puff machine uh, with himself that is more probably precious than his life so the story goes that puff this company found out this gentleman and gave him a new swing machine see think about it like the power of one photo to change somebody's life okay. interesting okay uh, somebody who has studied uh, history or maybe uh, i think even in documentary photography if you study uh, the great depression of america uh, comes in during the study of either uh, probably in documentary photography or especially people who are studying international history uh, mm -hmm. this is a very very famous photo by a lady called dorothea lang and the name of this photo is the migrant mother uh, i would request participants who would be probably seeing some of these uh, gentlemen or the lady who are talking about for the first time please note uh, the names or you can easily take a screenshot of this so you can just later refer to their works see one or two photos in this presentation will not do actual justice of the kind of photographers they are actually it's a brilliant photo okay uh, this is oh, a oh. very very famous photographer called robert kappa and he was a war photographer and yeah. this gentleman had the courage of saying something if your photographs are not good enough you are not close enough so this is a quotation by this gentleman called robert kappa now a person who is saying that if your photographs are not good enough you are not close enough so how close was he so this was a photograph taken at the battle of normandy where you can see a soldier is being shot in front of him and he is in a live battlefield so this is the power wherein he could say if you are not close enough your photos are not good enough with one step ever okay let me come to the fifth uh, photo of this particular presentation is uh, of course guruji padmashri raghurai uh, one of the most humble people i have ever met and the photo that you are seeing on the left is a very very rare photograph uh, if you search it on the internet i don't think you get uh, more than one instance of it it's a very rare photograph and i really love this photograph of him documenting mother teresa uh, one on the top you can see mother mary is holding jesus christ and on the bottom we can see the care love warmth of mother teresa so stories can tell so many things none of the photographers had told me the stories about the subjects but uh, but story is all about interpretation right yeah. okay. okay uh so this was uh okay okay let me just 
turn on my yeah, yeah. so yeah. so the, these were the video i uh, not the videos i mean these are the photos that uh, i really want to share uh, some of the finest works it's it's not just these are the only five finest works i have ever seen but uh, these are uh, some of the photographs that have left an impression on me uh, now uh, one thing which i understood from this uh, presentation that is uh, visual storytelling is one of the core or key ingredient when it comes to street photography right right so can you suggest some ways by which we can improve our perspective or improve the art of visual storytelling through photography right shomni uh, again i, I i'll be sharing things from my own experience what i have yeah, felt yeah. so far over the period of can time. you explain this entire thing with some of your own pictures pictures you have clicked i i would love to i love to but before i yeah, say yeah. Uh, i would uh, love to share a few things with you mm -hmm. uh, in street photography or documentary photography and of course i'm not uh, excluding other forms of photography also uh, you have to experience life you have to experience life uh, until and unless you experience life uh, phot what is photography photography is about documenting those wonderful moments but if our sole objective is only those moments and we are not uh, experiencing lives those moments will never ever come one is you need to experience lives the number two you need to understand uh, a guitarist who plays a very beautiful uh, stroke or chords on his guitar it comes naturally he doesn't have to think about the four or five strings in the guitar I, i'm sorry I, i understand there are four five or six strings I, i'm not i'm not a musician so any musician participants who are out there please forgive me so so he doesn't have to think the guitar becomes an extension of his body so in terms of photography it is the same when you are documenting you should not think that there is an instrument called camera the camera should be basically an extension of your hand eye and mind you don't when you see something you don't have to think that i have to pick up my camera it will come up automatically these are the okay. few things probably that would help you and not only that uh, in street photography you have to be uh, the level of your consciousness should be uh, a little more because uh, you need to see a lot of things at the same time and not only see a lot of things you have to pre visualize with your experience you have to pre visualize uh, what might happen down the line and the last point that i want to include is people skills are very very important in photography i mean i understand in every form of photography but especially when you are a street photographer or a documentary photographer uh, people skills are very very important uh, shonit what i will do is i will not take a very long time uh, mm -hmm. i will be sharing a few of my images very uh, yes yes fast uh, and in the meantime uh, let's turn off cameras yeah i have turned off my video yeah, yeah. okay uh, one of my video yeah okay uh, one of my pet projects i would say it's called uh, i have named it's a very funny name uh, it's called uh, kolkata oli goli pakosh tholi so uh, any bengali who would be listening right now would be basically smiling but uh, if you don't speak bengali don't worry it basically i'll translate that in english for you it means kolkata's uh, the lanes by lanes and the intestines what it basically means is uh, the heart and soul of kolkata so this is my pet project that i have been doing over the decade okay the first photo that i would uh, love to share with you is uh, this is the photo uh, that uh, just before the Uh, the webinar started we were talking about uh, we are missing uh, durga pujo and uh, the kumo tuli outings yes yes so yes, yes. this is a photo that is taken if you can see the house on the right that is the spider man house if you can just remember it is taken at oh, kumo oh, tuli it's a, it's, a, it's an unlikely place uh, where uh, rope walking is done but i was pretty lucky so yes, yes. when when i when i saw this thing happening i wanted to capture uh, 
this particular little girl who is basically doing this uh, balancing act now uh, it comes with practice uh, mm -hmm. it's it's not just about photography anything in this world comes with practice uh, you have to be a little more conscious of what is ar happening around you with when i was photographing that and you can understand from the exposure it was a very very dull day the sky was very badly lit so it was yes, yes, around yes. afternoon so the exposure uh, is not very good in terms of the sky so i saw a eagle or a kite bird that flew from the right hand corner of the screen and i was lucky enough to take that photo at that particular moment because for me it looked like uh both I mean, the girl should have been free she should not have been like uh not earning a living for the family so the the question that i raised to myself uh, who is actually free even though the girl is having the same kind of a stature of the bird but still it looks like uh, the girl is actually caged now yes. i have if you notice i have also included the girl's father in the photo of course the girl's father is careful or he is uh, looking after the kids uh, well being of course but more than that he is actually looking at the rope because god forbid if something wrong happens with this child uh, i hope that never ever happens and, and 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 these little kids are very very skilled very skilled uh, the whole if something wrong happens the whole family will be in a problem i hope you can understand because she yes, is yes. earning the bread and butter yes. of the family yes. okay he is looking quickly, straight at it yeah let let me quickly move into the next one uh, this was a, thank you uh, this was one of the photos that i had taken at a place called ama street in kolkata and this was very near to ama street post office so again it was a very lucky day uh, i wanted to take a photo where Uh, if possible i could show the secularism of india and and again again i was very lucky that it was a day of shab e barat shab e barat is something very very similar to the either the hindu tarpon or uh, uh, it's basically remembering god and remembering forefathers uh, it's something very similar to tarpon and uh, for christians it is all souls day and mm -hmm. i found this little boy in the prayer cap and wearing a punjabi and a shalwar kameez uh, uh, and moving away and of course i had to hide because if he was aware of my presence he would have probably run away or i don't know i mean i i may not have got this photo so my very basic objective of capturing this photo was to the show the secularism uh, of which we are very very proud as an indian mm -hmm. Yes. okay this photo is uh, i will not consider as a street photo but more of as a documentary photo kind of a thing but of course the person was not very aware of what i was actually photographing and uh, this is the exact photo this is not a crop photo i did not take his face because and one more thing i would like to include is respect plays a very very big thing in street photography because you are photographing your subjects until and unless i can respect my subjects uh, i cannot take their photos so with due respect to this gentleman called philip i did not take his face and i wanted to show his misery uh, the world in which is living with a juxtaposition of again it was a sheer coincidence sheer luck that somebody was running across and i was lucky enough to take a moment where two opposite things are happening in the same frame uh this is a photo of the bara masjid or the nakhoda mosque in calcutta uh mm -hmm. this is uh, taken on the day of eid and uh, on the right hand part you can see the mosque has been decked up because eid has already been declared so it's a very uh, after 30 days of fasting that happens it's a very festive moment but on the contrast you see a gentleman who is offering his namaz in spite of the pomp and show that is going on around the street so these are the two interesting thing that hit me that uh, in one frame two stories are happening together yeah.
Okay, this is a photo wherein uh, I found uh, somebody had thrown a uh, teddy bear on the street and I, of course, this was a Sunday and I had to wait for quite some time because Sundays are pretty dull in Kolkata because as you know, like people would have a very good lunch and they would go for an afternoon siesta. So uh, that is the reason I had to wait for some time and I found a little girl being taught how to ride a bicycle by the father. For me, the interpretation was that it was definitely not the child's uh, teddy bear, but for me, it looked like uh, the child has grown up from one stage to the other. But yes. while taking the photograph, and even after taking the photograph, I found something more interesting. There are four stages of life. One is the childhood, which is represented by a teddy bear. The second stage is adolescence, that is represented by the little girl. The third stage is adulthood represented by the father and the fourth stage is the elderly stage is represented by the woman so in one photo i could not only get a story and, and now again you can see you can see sun was pretty pretty harsh it was around yes. three or four o'clock i don't really remember the time i need to check out the exit but it was a very very sunny day and of course you can see with the shadows Okay, I pers as I told you, I respect my subject. So personally, I do not love taking photographs of anything to do with poverty. So, but I still took this photo, uh, not because of the backlit, but what I found really interesting was, you will see where I've highlighted, I have never ever seen a balloon with a gloomy face or a yes. sad face. Wherever I've seen a balloon, it is always with a smiley. It looked like this, of course, the child is selling balloons at a traffic stop. It is not definitely something very, very nice. But for me, it looked like the balloon. If you, if you see the balloon on the, uh, the other balloon that uh, on the right, even it has got a sad kind of a face. So yes. probably it looked like me. even the balloon is also sad about the state of affairs of this little child. That is sad, yes. yes. Okay, this is again a, a style of photography. It's called layers in photography. Of course, uh, what I want to project is uh, there is a concept of two, two, two. But the interesting part, of course, it took a long, long time. At least I, I believe it took at least 15 minutes to get this particular frame. Because if you notice, every subject on the left is actually looking to the right. This man is looking to the right. The boy is actually looking towards the girl. And it took time because I could control a human being asking them, of course, I never ever do that. But how do I control two swans? So I had to wait for a perfect moment wherein one swan on the left would be looking to the right. That is the reason it took a little bit of time. Okay. Uh, other than us, uh, who we consider uh, as straight people, uh, there are there's a huge community of lgbtq people all around the world and you will be probably surprised to know kolkata plays a very very interesting role in the history of uh, there is a pride walk that happens which is called a rainbow pride walk that happens every uh, year uh, around uh, in the month of uh, december or so so mm -hmm. I, this was a photograph around uh, Shialda. It was not Shialda. It was around Moulali area. I had got a very sweet moment of having uh, a moment of their lives. Uh, again, in the in the frame, there are two parts. Uh, probably on the right hand part, it is represented by someone like us who would be considered as straight people. But there would be people. Uh, either would be inclined for the other gender or the same gender, whatever it is. So Calcutta has got various different faces. It's not just about people like us. It is also about people like them. They are equally a part of our society. So this is what I wanted to capture when I had this moment. Okay. Okay, this is again a very uh, personal kind of photo. When I mean personal, I mean, I, mean, I, I do not know this man, but uh, 
I have a feeling for this person. The first thing is he's an old man on the on the wall. There is a photo of uh, definitely his wife, and the photo makes it probably a little more interesting because of uh, the clock. It's about the cycle of life. Yes. Uh, this is again taken at Kumotuli uh, around uh, the time when the gods of the, the, the idols are basically transported in those small lorries or trucks or the kind of transportation that you have. And as you know about that place very well, even the participants also know about this place, there is a circular railway track. So uh, for me, it was the moment it looked like even God has to wait for human beings. Although it is not, it is my kind of interpretation. So I had taken it, it has in, a, in a slow shutter speed, wherein, and you know that in local trains, you do not have doors, those typical doors. It's basically a yeah, yeah. open door. So I knew it would be passing. With a slow shutter, I would be getting this kind of a moment. So this was the objective of taking this particular photo. OK, uh, the one that you're seeing is, uh, again, it's an application of layer. No, uh, the guy is not actually kissing the girl. It is again in three different layers. Uh, it was taken just in front of the maneuver, uh, which is at uh, at Esplanade, that, that is the New Market Sim Park. So uh, the man was basically coming in from the left to right. The lady was coming from the right to left, and of course they were at a distance of at least three, four feet in between. But since still photography is about two dimensional thing, I took that advantage of night and the concept of silhouette. And I clicked at a certain moment wherein it looked like uh, they are in love, but actually they are not. Okay, this is again uh, interesting. I mean, this is a yeah. that I had taken at Ripon Street in front of St. Mary's School, wherein uh, there is a statue of Mother Teresa holding a a little boy and this gentleman is carrying uh, the little boy his his own son and uh, of course i had a little word after taking the photo but when I, there's something interesting about uh, social media like uh, when i <laughs> put up this photo a few days later somebody tagged this gentleman and then i came to know that he is basically a doctor and and of course, like when I was speaking, he told me that he was going for his namaz. So it's not just about two religions. It is also about the similarity also. OK, this was taken somewhere around uh, Hind cinema. And I was actually, I'll be very honest, I was actually targeting this uh, poster and not these two people. I was basically waiting for something to happen in coincidence. and. After waiting, patience again plays a very, very big role. I found, with luck, this lady is actually holding the little boy. I mean, I mean I'm sure the boy has did some kind of mischievous job. That is the reason the mother yeah. is actually holding either the ears or the or at least by the hair. And the expression of the boy is looking like, why are you holding me? And for me, it looked like the boy actually wants to run away from the situation, which is represented by the photograph on the left. I mean, the poster, uh, oh, yeah. the cinema poster on the left. So for me, it was, I could see his expression uh, as a juxtaposition on the left. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go a little fast. This was at uh, uh, Seven Point Crossing at Park Circus. And uh, somebody had thrown, I do not know, like a broken watermelon. Uh, I found a very, and, and it took almost over 45 minutes to figure out uh, this a photo. I mean, where it looked like what would happen if somebody is not wearing a helmet. Yeah, helmet, yes. And, and, and luckily, I could uh, get a motorcyclist and a pillion. They had a helmet, but they're not wearing it. They're not wearing it, exactly. So, Again, it's a coincidence, but these kind of coincidences are, of course, about luck. But you have to be prepared. And uh, yes, to luck to an extent. And of course, I mean, how do I say? I mean, God has to be great with you. Otherwise, certain things probably happen uh, because you are destined. Yes. 
this is near Shialda station, wherein a bo I mean a man is basically carrying his mother. I mean the mother is definitely sick. Uh, it's nothing new. I mean a, a son can always carry his mother, but what I found is very interesting is he was carrying a packet which has written to call thank you. So, I mean, you cannot thank your mother, but it is the act is of a thank you. Yes. I found this very, very interesting. So we have come to the last slide, like before like, beautiful, we turn beautiful. on the cameras, like uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are, I mean, people who have just logged in or the, the, the very first time that we are beating uh, if you want to be in touch with me, I am available on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Telegram, YouTube, and uh, Twitter. Of course, when I'm telling you that I'm on YouTube, I'm definitely not a YouTuber, but uh, I love sharing a little whatever I've learned over the years. If you can just remember the keyword S-S-G-H-O-S-A-L, it's all same on all the social media platforms. Okay, let me turn on the video and let me stop sharing the screen yeah it was really answer really answer ma'am, can we take some questions from the audience now first of all sir brilliant exactly thank it you. was brilliant. thank you so much thank you yes yes i'm eagerly waiting to do that uh, but before i take up questions i also would like to bring to your notice sir that we have amazing response from many of the attendees and uh, they are all praises for you and your photographs and I think rightfully so, sir, because the works truly were brilliant. So uh, I thank would like so, to bring to your thank, notice first of all. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you to the participants for their very, very kind hearted responses. Uh, I would be very honest and tell you uh, it's to do with luck. Kolkata uh, go the. the I consider uh, Kolkata as a place of my worship and Kolkata was very, very kind enough to have given me those uh, moments. It was quite possible that uh, the days when I had gone out to take those photos, maybe these things would not have happened. But uh, if I, since I consider Kolkata as my place of worship, uh, definitely that God has helped me. So, uh, so I think uh, yeah. the first query that uh, we have for yeah. today's session is from Rohit Gharami. And uh, he has the question, sir, that uh, he has started practicing analog photography in this digital era. And of right. course, there are a lot of obstacles surrounding that. So he mm -hmm. would like to know that being a witness of both of the eras, what's your thinking about analog medium in this digital era? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I... Okay, before I move ahead, I understand there is a, another uh, webinar at 7.30. So yes. how much time do we have really left? Uh, oh, sir, uh, we would, uh, I think we are no, in a, not in a hurry, but we would have to wrap it up by 7.20. So yeah, yes. we do have okay. 10, 10 minutes in hand. 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes more, no problem. Okay, I, I, I'll take the question uh, in a way. Uh, there is always a controversy that goes on. Uh, Film photography was difficult. Uh, digital is very easy. Digital people would tell that is an yesteryear thing. That is an outdated technology. I am not bothered about it. It's a common tussle that goes on. Fine, no, no problem about that. But only thing uh, what I find is the gentleman which we spoke about. I mean, not only not only I'm not talking just about Steve Makari sir or Raghurai sir. I'm talking about people have adapted they have adapted from the film photography or the analog photography to digital photography. See, at the end of the day, it is photography. It is not, it is, we should not have a fight about which medium it, it is being recorded with. At their point of time, they did not have an option of uh, digital photography. Now, when, uh, when they were doing still photography, they, they did not probably have an option of taking photographs with plates. So people who had taken during those times with plates, they would call it that you are taking with just 35 millimeter films. So people during the analog age would tell you that you are taking with point and shoot cameras or mobile phones or DSLRs. It's very easy to take an exposure. 
but my take would be very simple it's not much about what was the medium photography has remained the same photography was difficult at their time photography is difficult at our time photography was easy at their point of time anybody who would have practiced is easy photography is even easy today they had dark room we have got a digital dark room which is called a photoshop or something very similar so i don't think there is any fight goes on but i would the thing that i have taken from film photography to digital photography for my learning do digital think analog now what do i mean by that when you have a digital camera our tendency is to take random photos because there is no need of films you put in your sd card if the sd card fills up take another sd card put in but please remember when people used to take photographs with an analog camera they had about in uh, i believe the gentleman had mentioned about ilford pan 400 that probably if i am not very wrong he would be rohit uh, garani would be able to ghara me yeah he would be able to correct me i think that used to those kind of films used to have only about 12 exposures not even 36 if i am wrong please correct me so for me even though you're in a digital era think and then click don't randomly click so in the in the digital era think analog click digital think that you have got just about 36 exposures with you so that will give you a constraint of not clicking anything and we think that uh, uh, digital era clicking is free no it is not free consider a thing called a shutter cost shutter life each shutter that you click has got a cost because every camera whether it is a mobile phone camera or a very very high end uh, full frame camera everything has got something called a shutter life so think analog shoot digital and this yeah i think that was a beautiful uh, way of putting yeah. out sir and uh, Thank you. the next query that we have is by kumar jeet Yeah. and um, he's asking that you know due to the present covid and lockdown situation we can't go out much to shoot so how do we continue with street photography and since we started off on this chapter today's webinar about this whole situation of pandemic and photography i think uh, it would be quite justified to come to a conclusion about the situation sir yes see uh, i mean uh, the life is slowly taking its own phase and form wherein people are slowly moving out for their work but uh, if we are of course if somebody of us who is listening is a professional photographer or a photojournalist of course his work demands uh, him to go out and uh, take photos but uh, unfortunately uh, we are having that liberty of not going out so uh, the gentleman who has asked this question for him and for the others uh, i'll tell you what i have started doing since i cannot go out and take photographs i have invented my own genre now that genre is called balcony photography it's very safe to stay in your own balcony and to shoot <laughs> and and i'll tell you i have never uh, shot so much photos inside my home earlier uh during this pandemic i have been doing not a huge amount of work of course i am missing the streets uh i would love to go out and take photos once again but uh, if, even when things become a little more normal uh please use a lot of caution but till the time you are not able to go out this is a very wonderful time to learn other forms of photography you don't have to be a balcony photographer but uh most of our cameras nowadays I, i mean our mobile phones nowadays have got a macro camera so you can easily indulge in uh, something called macro photography let me assume you do not have a mobile phone with a macro lens fine no problem i am sure most of us who have joined this webinar they would be having uh, something called a dslr now 
especially if you have 1855 or a 50 mm lens all works fine try and google and do something to find you don't need a dedicated macro lens if you have one it is fine but in the pandemic you cannot buy one or neither i am recommending you to buy one search for something called poor man's macro they will teach you techniques of reversing your lenses to get macro photographs so you don't have to buy a new gear but at the same time you stay inside your home and you can learn a new form of photography so take up this moment or this time till the such time you are going out to learn something new that is what i can say so uh, we have a lot of queries coming in and uh, but unfortunately we are short on time yeah, that's quite an time. unfortunate thing so but uh, to all the attendees who have you know posted a few queries i think sir shared his uh, contact details as well and the way of reaching out to him but uh, sir is there a possibility for the attendees to email you with their queries if they want Uh, I, I would I'll tell you. Uh, of course, they can email me, but I would love to if they can send me on Instagram because uh, Instagram has now been very kind to us uh, from uh, replying from the laptops because uh, I am not very very comfortable. Of course, I use the phone, but I am not very very comfortable in typing out on a phone. So for me, it becomes very very easy to type and now uh, out an answer. on instagram there is an option of messaging and if you have uh, recently like uh, what do you say updated your instagram you would see like it has looking like a more like a facebook messenger so for me it becomes very oh, truly, very easy. truly <laughs> it becomes very very easy for me to uh, reply with uh, a messenger kind of a thing than on replying uh, via email and uh, since you mentioned so, this so so you all yes yes uh, since you mentioned this i can uh, I, this i'm talking about people who are new into photography i'm not talking about somebody who is highly experienced uh, there is this i mean of course you would be knowing much more than i do there is a software called uh, telegram and on yes. telegram there is uh, i have a channel called ssgho sal now what i do every day each and every day i send out one link either it could be a youtube video or could be a something uh, you could uh, click every sunday i host a quiz kind of a thing so every day we have something related to photography being posted out there so you can be in touch today okay. is world photography okay. day but world photography doesn't have only just one day it's 365 days in a year so every day is a photography day <laughs> truly sir and yeah. uh, but sir uh, since you talked about uh, attendees being able to dm you on instagram i think the first query is what is your username on instagram so that people can search you and they can start dming you from tonight yes, because we have a lot of queries coming okay. in so <laughs> uh, what i have done is i have written it on uh, this chat box yes yes it. on the chat box yes yes i have written it but it's also s s g h o s a l s s g h o s a l i think that's a very easy to remember username yeah. for that indies as well so uh please feel free to you know extend your queries beyond this session to sir yeah, over sir because he's more than willing to answer all of your queries and we are very sorry that we couldn't entertain all of them but we are right. running short on time for today's webinar and that's f and you have, and you have got a brilliant webinar but, coming up <laughs> but sir i would also like to tell you sir that yours webinar was also mind blowing and i think the pictures speak for themselves so i do so not much. have to do much of talking uh, because i think the photographs that you have shown they have done justice to our entire right. theme and uh, to the fact that we are celebrating international photography day so yeah. thank you for that sir and thank, thank you, so you for being a part of this webinar and thank you to samneet also because you truly were an amazing moderator and you truly represented you. the viewers so thank you for doing that and uh, on behalf of the entire team thank you to all the attendees who were a part of this webinar we'll be coming back shortly in a few minutes so stay tuned